competition against the best. Someone's going to win, someone's going to lose. Everybody wants to win. You know? It's not that you want to see someone lose, you want to win. They're the best at what they do, and you want to beat the best. Oh, yeah. That is what fishing's all about. <laughs> Yeah, so round four of AFC Series 14 was a bit of a, a new event. So we had the choice of choosing a new venue to apply a mixed bag species. Get us in there, please. Round three, definitely uh, mixed emotions. <sighs> Dean and myself had opportunities that we missed, but we pushed ourselves through that lull and just stayed focused and we got the bites we needed. We didn't fish as clean as we did round two, <laughs> but we got a better result than we did round two. <sighs> Yeah, yeah. It has happened before. You go into a tournament knowing that you can't win it. You can't give up. We're going to get together. I'm going to stay local and yeah. been here enough days that we kind of have a, an idea of this dam instead of going to a different system where we have absolutely no idea at all. You'd tell them. Team bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very risky decision, but I think it's a worthwhile one. But just like that, we're in Team Dam. <laughs> You still got to try your hardest. You want to get the best possible result you can. Most definitely. The last hurrah. We couldn't win the series overall, but we could win the day. Here are the rules and points guidelines for the final round of AFC 14, a mixed species event where Team BCF will compete at Team Brodam and Team Hobie at Yungala Dam. Their bag will be determined by their four longest fish. A legal fish must be caught to register a point. A bonus point will be awarded to the team that catches the longest fish. So round four is a couple of reasons in my choice. We could go to Kenshin, Team Bra or stay at Yungala. Kenshin is, all the fish are relatively the same size. Certain calibres of fish will bite at the same time. Whereas Timbra has a whole range of class of fish. So if the big fish aren't biting because it's full moon, they're biting on night, it's a fair chance the small fish will bite. So I thought Timbra, if, if anything, is the safest bet. Best cast out of the way. Go get them. So we went up to the back of the bay and it turns out that it was probably BCF spot from the first few sessions. They weren't there today, they went to a different location, so we took advantage of that. One, two, three. There was no chance we weren't going to go and have a cast there, you know. We're fishing, man. We're going to go and have a cast at where we can definitely capitalise on a good fish and yeah, it paid off today, it was good. Go, go. <laughs> we were hunting for a trophy fish, yeah, because that's what the whole fishing socially is all about. That's what it's for there. Right. Our main aim was to try and get a 50 centimetre fish. <laughs> Suck a ball. Especially this morning when we had no pressure on us for trying to win the event. I got close, got a 48. Yeah, to get that fish straight up, we were like, yeah, that's sweet. And then we saw that golden tree up the back there and there's a fish on that. 100%. We both looked at that tree and said that's the one it's meant to be. Pulled in behind and let Mark put the cast in there. Within seconds he's on. Yep. He's around the tree. We both knew straight up that that was a big fish. It just took off. He's around, right around. And I could actually see the line going straight down onto a, the end of a stick. So it was going straight onto the end of a stick and it was straight around the other side of it. Let's go right the way around the tree. Speed it up. I just sort of kept an eye on the line. I could see the line still moving, so I knew it was still on there. Let's see if he's still on. We just motored in, and as we got up to it, I managed to get into the side. I broke, drove the boat into a couple of branches. The branches were coming up everywhere. It was mayhem. We've had mayhem moments for the three days leading up to this day. Push me in. We always look back and laugh at the mayhem moments, and this was just one of them. Push me in. Managed to lean down, get my arm into the water, untangle the line from around the tree. And by that stage, I'd even pretty much forgotten about the rod and just started handlining the thing back in. And yeah, it was really good actually. The lighter I went on it, the smoother it came out. Yes, here he comes, here he comes. 
Wind it up, wind it up, wind it up, wind it up. Yeah, it was a long time. <laughs> yeah, it was a really memorable fight, that's for sure. Guys, is he still here? Yeah, past the tree. Come on. I've got him out on him. Okay. Oh, oh, buddy. Come on, nice and easy. Here you go. Here you go. <laughs> oh, that's how you're headlining, brother. <laughs> Mike couldn't control himself. You could have heard the Yahoo from Mackay, I reckon. And you could tell it was it was a trophy we were after. Woo! Seeing that thing, as soon as it got in the net, you knew that that was, that was on the marker. That was a 52. That's the biggest sooty that's been measured so far on the AFC. The biggest sooty. <laughs> it's a really memorable moment. That's what you want here. Memories. You can't buy it. That is what fishing's all about. That is why people come to places like this at Yungala, to get trophy fish like that <laughs> and get it any old how. <laughs> that is an absolute trophy, that thing. There's a lot of pressure choosing Timber as a location. When we'd made the decision after round two, the actual um, AFC CEO, I guess you would call him, said, what are you doing? Why are you going there? It's a very ballsy, risky decision. And then you talk to a couple of people and you sort of work out, well, they're all thinking it's tide related and that's done at seven o'clock. So we started at 5.30, gets to nearly six o'clock, still no fish, half an hour. Half an hour is a long time when you're staring at the same snag, just chucking it over and over again. Yep. <laughs> little one, little one. So finally hook one. Cranks his lure in. Now I can hear this thing just trolloping, just... <laughs> I'm just like, whoa. <laughs> sounds, sounds big, like everything sounds big to me. I've never seen a marimuddy before. I look at the net, and oh, I've seen so many fishing episodes where people have ruined marimuddy up the net. Ready? Don't mess this up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it was worth it now. That's probably the smallest barramundi on, in history. <laughs> but it's definitely longer than any sooty we've caught. So now, Hobie boys have to catch a barramundi to beat the biggest fish. Get him back in the water. Such a cool creature. Cool creature. So after that big fish that Mark got, we um, sort of fished a few spots on the way out of that bay and decided to go back to the east side where we'd fished the previous two days. The numbers weren't there today. We are probably bumping around and laughing and we didn't go in there as silent as we did the other day, you know, we sort of, we are just cruising, we were just enjoying it. I was 60. Oh, right, your name off the record. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's one. Oh, come on, nice and slow. Easy peasy. Here we go, he's out. Kill it. He's going back in. Here we go, working back on the mat. Good work, mate. Good nice work. little fish. We did get one fish quite quick. It wasn't the bigger fish that we were hoping for, but it was still a very good average fish that we needed in our bag. Things were looking up. We were confident we could fill our bag and hopefully get those upgrades. Down the tree. Oh. Oh, I've got the electric for you. Okay. Come on, buddy. It's all right. It's okay. Okay, here we go. Net time. Fill that electric. He's done. He's finished. It's all right. Just let the bum in the wood if you want. This one feels OK to the going on the tree. Another one there. Yep. That's good. Nice little fish. We had a lot of fun. Even catching those fish, the pressure was off. We had a lot of fun today. That's a bag, bro. <laughs> <laughs> We've been sitting here for an hour and a half. We've had one fish. We might move, try another location I had in mind. So we pull up to the new point. 
the wind's blowing onto the point. It all feels right, you know, of course it all feels right. Everything feels right to me. I don't know anything about that, but he goes, yeah, this feels right, like, okay. Hit a fish straight away. Ah, oh, it's off, it's off, it's off, it's off. Barra comes up, Lua goes this way, Barra goes that way. Ah, oh, this is the story of our tournament. We just, things are going wrong and wrong. Team BCF have done nothing easy. Not anything easy this tournament, so get your cast back in. I reckon I had two or three more casts, got that distinctive hit. Crunch. And he just whacks this thing. I've never seen anyone set the hook so deep before, and he goes, yep. I don't normally mess around with fish. I said to Liam the first day, I said, if I hear your drag, you're in trouble. But I sneakily started to back the pressure off on the fish and take my time. And if you watch it, it's a very long winded fight for the size of the fish. You guys gotta back my drag off. Dean Sylvester backing his drag off. Okay. He's going, oh, we've got to get this one in, mate. We've got to get this one in. I'm just going to take it easy. The important part is that fish is here, not there. All right, you ready? Get ready. Just have it lower so I can get it here. Right on. Right on. Oh, come on. Right on. Yes. Well done, mate. Well done. <laughs> Took a long wind at approach, you know, we ended up netting it. It's all exciting, we're happy because we finally got two, beautiful. And I mentioned to Liam, don't mess around. When the bites are coming, there'll be a little wolf pack of three or four fish and they sort of move past and they're gone. So he must have remembered that because while I'm measuring and doing all the stuff, Liam's on. Yep. He's on. Oh, yes. Yeah. His first ever barra. Yeah. Screaming. Come on, come on. Rod down, rod down, rod down, rod down. Yep, rod down. It is an absolute lightning strike through my body. I've hit this thing and then everything goes silent. All I can hear is my heart's beating out of my chest. I'm like, oh. This guy's never hooked one before. He doesn't know what to do. Dean! What do, I, what do I do? Wind him, wind him, wind him. He's just standing dead still, nothing. Yep, keep winding, keep winding. In saying that, he didn't panic. The worst thing you can do with a bar of money, they're already chaos. I'm panicking, I'm shaking, I'm breathing. I've never heard someone so fit breathe so heavily. I thought he was doing the breaths for when you're giving birth. He's like <gasps> Take a breath, take a breath. This is gonna be the biggest one. It's a fight of my life, and it's just me versus a barramundi. Oh, yeah, look at this thing. Ah. Yes! <laughs> sure, Liam will probably explain the experience better, but when that fish went into that net, I was shaking for him. Like, it was an incredible feeling. Yes! I've got a barra on AFC. <laughs> That moment, to live it with him is just incredible and for the whole lot to be caught on camera, you know, like, he's got the whole lot and it's going to be on television. Barramundi. <laughs> yes! Thank you. You have made my day, Fish. <laughs> so good. Cool. So good. Very big year. I took a bit of time off the fishing scene since the last AFC, just to have rest. To win AFC, that's the biggest highlight any angler can ask for. You can't buy it. <laughs> Experience of being in AFC, it's exactly the same as tournaments. Given a short time span and have to perform or fail, and a lot of the times you you give it your best shot, you'll come up trumps. Yeah, it quietened down around about quarter past eight, half past eight. Pretty quiet. It's just like, there's no words. We went back to where we knew they were. We knew that they were shut down, so we just shifted across a little bit further, a little bit deeper, and we fished them deeper. It was tough. The fish had been pressured. You sort of don't have a choice but to keep your spirits up. That's one of the most important parts of the whole exercise there. It's completely different to a, your average bloke going and having a fish down the river. Looks good here. It's really bad. It's quiet. And give a red hot crack. I just love fishing, especially when it's tough. I find that you have to do your best or you're gonna fail. <laughs> we really did have a good time out there today. We could just go and do anything and not have to worry about anybody pushing in on a spot or 
the spot not getting rested or anything like that. It was just a free for all in, in the respect that we could go anywhere we wanted, do anything we wanted. It was cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, he made a good account for himself. <laughs> it's a little guy's day. We never really went into today's tournament with the thought to really win because I knew and everyone kept telling me it's going to be very hard to catch Batman. <laughs> but when we got three and we did the math on the overall length of the bag, then you start thinking, we can actually win the whole thing. So then we sort of got more competitive probably than we were before. That spot, it went quiet. We pulled two fish out of it. Dean's gone, all right, game plan. We're leaving here, we're going to the other point and we'll see the day out. I'm like, yep, solid plan. So you get the next spot, felt fishy again. Dean makes the exact same car, so got the last fish at that spot. Twitch, twitch, crunch. Yep. Hit this thing really hard to make sure it was stuck. It didn't seem like a much bigger fish, but it was a heavy set fish and I just could not get it to the boat. It was driving me crazy. And so I was back in the drag off and it kept jumping and carrying on. I couldn't see my lure and I'm like, ah! I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm yeah. sorry. Jesus. And again, Dean Sylvester, a big stone cold fisherman, Mr. Gameface, he's shaking at the knees. He's telling me, he's like, Oh, we need this fish, mate. I said probably the wrong thing. I went, this could be the fish that wins us the tournament. He's like, don't say that, that'll jinx us. Because I thought, this is going to be a closure. You know, we can close out on, on Hobie. They need to catch a bit of money if I can win this fish. Get ready, get ready, get ready. In the net, in the net. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, it's in the net. I'm shaking, my shoulders are shaking, everything, your knees feel funny. Could not believe it that we, after how our day had progressed, that we had caught a full bag of barramundi. I just, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> not a massive fish, but for daytime when we had it as tough as we have, that's pretty cool to catch a 70 centimetre barramundi. See you, mate. Hey, I got my thumb. Oh, there's a bench. It's bittersweet. Being here is sweet. Seeing the trophy go is bitter. Sometimes it's not about how you win, it's about how you lose. And it is what it is. I threw this lure out and this, I could feel something nibbling on this line, so I sort of sat back on it. I said, stand clear everyone, this fish is big. <laughs> Look at this catch. How he pulled it in, I don't know. <laughs> I'm lucky I've bulked up over winter because Mark didn't even have time to, to get the net. I just launched it in the boat, American bass style. <laughs> Unbelievable, he's just lifted this beast out of the water and I looked down and that <laughs> was bloody bigger than it. Look <laughs> little fella. I think we're sort of down to about 13 or 14 minutes left. I lean over to Mercury and I go, bring in the dinner bell. <laughs> nice work. Cast out. But he shakes his head, he's just thinking, Rookie, what's he going on about? And he just goes, watch, yo, rang the dinner bell. Hit this thing, started jumping, and I just crank him down, crank him down, like, get the net, get the net. He's fighting this fish, and I'm just like, okay, grab the net. And I saw this thing jumping. All I could see was a full lure with a free hook, so there's only one hook in its skin. So then I thought, this is an upgrade now. And I start panicking. You know, it wasn't important yep. before, but now this fish is really, really important. I want it. So I'm taking out on Liam. He's there with the net, just waiting for me to give him something. And I'm, net it, net it, no, don't net it, net it, net it, don't net it, pull it out, put it in. Even though I'm screaming and carrying on, Liam handled it well. The fish ended up in the net. No, no, no. Yeah, now. <laughs> that was it. We'd upgraded. Hey. That's it. That's it, brother. That was how my AFC ended. Catching that barramundi was easily one of the greatest experiences I've ever had, so it was so much fun today. Here are the results for the fourth and final round of AFC 14. At Youngler, Team Hobie caught five fish, 
for a bag length of 187 centimetres, with a big fish of 52 centimetres. At Teambra targeting Barramundi, Team BCF caught five fish for a bag length of 267 centimetres, and their big fish is 70 centimetres. Well done, guys. Congratulations, guys. Well done. Smashing. This gives Team BCF four points for the round and the championship. Well done, guys. Well done. <laughs> Next time on AFC, yep. we take an action packed look at the highs and lows, capturing the excitement of Youngola and Teambra yep. in AFC 14. <laughs> <laughs>